Hello everyone. Today we are going to talk stretch markers. Stretch markers are kind of a Swiss knife when it comes to markers in Reaper and can be used for all kinds of different stretching purposes where you can move your markers to certain locations and then force those markers to snap to a specific location on the grid. You can use it to change tempo. You can use it to move item positions around and together with actions that Reaper provides to us, we can do all kinds of fancy stuff with it. And we are going through the very basic things that you need to know about stretch markers in this first video, but there will be a few follow-up videos on the topic showing you some more use cases where you can use stretch markers efficiently in your personal workflow. Let's get cracking. Well, before we start, let's explain to you the basic principle of stretch markers. The way that people like to imagine stretch markers is like, imagine a rubber band, which is pinned onto your wooden plank. You've got both ends fixed to the plank and the band is free to move left or right in between. Stretch markers are additional nails which you drive into the rubber band and then pull either left or right and then nail into the wood wherever you want it to be. The result will be that one part of the rubber band will be stretched while the other part will automatically compress due to it being a rubber band. The more nails you nail into the plank, the more stretching and compressing will be applied to the parts before or after the nail, the stretch markers. Well, that's the analogy that we are using here. Now let's put this into action. I've created a recording here, which is kind of on beat. I've put a metronome on the typical 120 BPM, which is the default here. And now I recorded something which is actually on beat and it's counting along the metronome, but we want to mess this up a bit. Let's listen to this first and then I will show you what we can do here. One, two, three, four, five. So that's it. We've basically one bar and we have me saying one, two, three, four, five. But we've got obviously one, two, and three on beat. Four then again is in between the beats and five is on the fourth beat, which is probably what we want here. But I will move this around a bit and make sure that four is on beat four and five is on beat five, which is beat one of the second bar. And I will do this via stretch markers. We are at the very beginning of the project and we want to move to the previous or next stretch marker. In order to do that, you need to remember the shortcuts. Control semicolon for going to the previous stretch marker, control and tick or apostrophe to go to the next stretch marker. Let's see what happens if we do this now. Nothing. I pressed the key, but nothing happened because we don't have stretch markers yet. Now let's listen to this again. One, two, three, four, five. So one, two, and three are beat, right? We need to find the four. Let's scrub by using the right arrow. There we go. Here we go. That's fine, right? Four, five. Well, let's put a stretch marker here. Let's press Control M to do that. It's silent, so we don't hear anything, but it will be there. Let's try it out by pressing Control in the previous marker key. Nothing happened. It's silent, but press Control tick. Stretch marker beat three thirty two percent. And that is the stretch marker that we mean. Four five. Right? That's the one that we want to move. Now that we've selected that one we can move to the position where we actually want this to be. To do that, we will press Alt and End, which will automatically get us to the start of the next measure. And because that's not where we're going to go, and we will use Control and Page Up, which will move us to the previous beat. That's where we want to go, right? So now what we need to do is we need to nail the stretch marker to this very position, which is done by pressing Control Alt M. Stretch marker moved. That's stretch marker moved. So the stretch marker was moved to the position where we're currently at. 
Let's go to the beginning of the project one. and play. One, two, three, four, five. So as it seems, there is no default stretch marker at the beginning of the item. So we will just repeat here and quickly do it. Let's go to the beginning of the item, to the first one. Here we go. One, two. Let's take this. Let's create another stretch marker. Control M. Move to that one. Stretch marker B166%. Let's take that and go to the beginning of the project. Zero percent. And move it here. Stretch marker moved. And now we do have this. One, two, three, four, five. The item is stretched, but one and three are actually at the correct position. And we need to do this with two now. So let's do this. Here, yeah. two. Let's create a stretch marker. Go to the next beat B2. and move it there. Stretch marker moved. Now let's listen to this. B1. One, two, three, four, five. Now the three, obviously. Three, three, four, five. Create one. Select it. Stretch marker B2. Stretch marker B3, 44%. And let's move it. R2, B1, R1, B3. Stretch marker moved. And now we should have. B1. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Which is obviously messy, right? We'd now need to move five as well. Five. Create one. Select it. Stretch marker bar one beat four fifty four percent. Go to the next beat. Bar two beat one zero percent. And nail it. Stretch marker moved. Now we have bar one. One, two, three, four, five. The three is probably a bit long here. So we could do that and adjust that by creating another one. Let's see here. One record, one item. B2, B3. Four, five. Four, four. Let's take this one. Where are we at? R1, B3, stopped. Let's put a stretch marker here and move it forward by selecting it. Stretch marker zero percent. Stretch marker ninety-two percent. Let's take that and let's jump to the position where we want it to be, which is fifty percent of B3. Jump to time slash marker slash region. One point let's two. Let's change that to fifty. Zero. Unsafe. And let's lay it in here. Stretch marker moved. Now let's see. B1, zero percent. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, it's not great, right? But it works. So what else can we do to probably enhance the quality of the audio? Because it's now stretched, as you can hear, right? And stretching means that it will always sound a bit weird. But what can we do to improve this finally? We can select the item and press Shift F2. And we can tab a few times. Okay, buffer Z length. H fade curve, in fade curve. Inverted quadratic phase out button. Zero point edit selected center normal button. Invert phase checkbox normalize button. Alt take pitch shift slash time stretch mode grouping. Take pitch shift slash time stretch mode combo box project default collapsed. And in here we can change that. Sound touch. Simple windows. Fast. Alice D 2.2.8 Pro. Alice D 2.2.8 efficient. Let's try efficient. I find this to be rather useful for sound designing, for example. It usually sounds a bit better. Unsafe. One, two, three, four, five. That doesn't in this case, right? Especially the hanger there. The first ones were kind of better, but the third one is a bit weird. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. It means it's something. And you could probably mess around with the different options in here. For example, we could get crazy and let's try out the new one. Media output let it flicker in the flicker in snipe I I loop new like no play take pitch playback rate set reserve take volume fade take edit edit nor in web normal take normal button take pitch shift slash time a list two point two point eight soloist which is called a list a list a list rubber band live rear rear let's use that and see what happens I'm saying five <laughs> that one is really crazy and especially meant for sound designing purposes I've used this quite a bit in the recent days and I will show you for what I actually used this in one of my other videos as soon as the project's finished. So now you know basic principles of stretch markers and how you can use them. You can use them to move things to where they are meant to be if they are not totally in time. Depending on your source material, however, the stretching can make the sound a bit weird. They usually work best when they don't have to move things around 
a lot. Like in this case, I had to especially stretch the four and five by quite a bit. And this means that the three had to be stretched longer because the audio tries to stretch equally. So we had to put a nail in between the three and the four so that we get more of the break than the three. And obviously with some of the stretching methods like elastic efficient, this is not going to sound well, but you know how it works. This can be useful for all kinds of purposes. Sound designing, putting things onto the beat, EDM tracks where you need to make sure that things are really on beat and snap to where they are meant to snap and all kind of various things. You can create tape stop and reverse zero effects. All this will probably be mentioned in one of my other videos, which will follow soon. Thanks for watching. If you've got any questions about stretch markers, let me know in the comment section below the video. If you want to follow me on Twitter, then do so. Although the current situation might end in me leaving Twitter sooner or later, depending on how things turn out with third-party Twitter clients. If you haven't noticed that, Twitter just recently decided that third-party Twitter clients would not be allowed on Twitter anymore which is really freaking me out since my favorite clients are third-party Twitter clients. And as soon as they aren't usable anymore because Twitter blocks them out, I won't be using Twitter anymore. But as soon as that happens, I will let you know about any other way you can reach out to me and get in touch other than the comment section below the videos, obviously. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, subscribe to the channel and you will get new videos every Monday at least. Until next time, bye-bye.